Why does this horrible, boring piece of shit got a sequel? Questions? I think I'm going to say it again. Why did this horrible, boring piece of shit got a sequel, which is unfriended, one of the laziest concepts ever for a horror movie. I think I'll tell you why. Because the filmmakers and producers are fucking idiots. That's why. They're just milking it for what it's worth. For today's dumb audience. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to lure people in to see garbage like this so that way it can make more money at the box office. And the fact that critics these days are too moronic that they have to give it a pass. Where they have to shit on other horror films from the past just so they can save their life and their job. <sighs> Amazing, isn't it? So now I'm about to review the sequel called Unfriended Dark Web. <sighs> as horrible as the original film Unfriended was, this is even worse. Instead of being about cyberbullying, there's another story. It doesn't even have a story. It's about... It's a story about a guy who bought a laptop because his old laptop uh, didn't work. It started crashing very slow. So, he said he bought it at Craigslist. He paid money for it, but when in reality he just stole it. What turned out to be the original founder of the laptop who's actually a killer and he actually has his followers which is which they are hackers and they're just gonna go around going after every single victim around killing them one by one so now the hacker along with his followers are just attacking him and his friends on the internet. They're just playing games and then guess what they're gonna do? They're just gonna kill them all one by one. Torturing them, making fun of them, anything. Because life sucks. It's being released by OTL Releasing this time. Yeah, this is Universal's new company, which they just recently released Upgrade. Let me tell you something. Upgrade is even ten times better than this crap, in spite of the shitty ending that they chose. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, I, be I believe a few weeks ago, well, I think it was a week ago. I just reviewed The Predator, where I actually did say that it is totally offensive to autistic people, including Asperger's. Well, they have a deaf girl in this movie, and I'm pretty certain this will totally offend all deaf people. I'm not kidding around. This is really insulting. Oh, God. And, of course, it's going to be predictable. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know exactly what's going to happen to the characters. Because they're too fucking dumb. I'm just going to spoil the whole fucking movie. Just for the sake of it. And just continue to go on. Before I reach my boiling point. And getting ready to punch a hole on my fucking laptop. I'm not going to do that though, of course. You know I'm not really going to do it. Because if I did, then I won't be able to go on the computer. 
I don't want that to happen. <laughs> but it does make you feel like you want to. <sighs> God. Anyway, um, let's get to this stupid review of the stupid fucking movie. Stars Colin Waddell, Betty Gabriel. Yes, Betty Gabriel is in this movie. The same actress who was in Get Out and Upgrade. Why is she in this movie? Yeah, I bet Jason Blum actually put her up to this. Because this is why he's casting her in several of his films that that he produced. Yeah, Blumhouse uh, Productions. And Blumhouse Tilt, too. Rebecca Rittenhouse, Andrew Lees, Connor Del Rio, Stephanie Nagaras, Sabara Wenyani, Chelsea Eldon, Alexa Mansour, what a name. Douglas Tate, Rob Welsh, Clara Beltran, and Brian Adrian. It's written and directed by Stephen Susco, which is based on the original Unfriended. The movie begins when we meet a guy named Mateus O'Brien who's working on a new laptop that he acquired, which is an Apple laptop, by the way. It's an Apple Mac OS High Sierra. Yeah, he tries to log in by finding a password. Yeah, he just types in the word password on there. That didn't work. He tries out other passwords that he can think of, like Feel the Burn 2018 or something, or 16, or even the... <laughs> Pawn shot first or any other kind before he finally gets to a question mark. Just as it says on the username. Question mark. He put it in and voila! He logs in. So, he found out that it was originally belonged to a guy named Nora C. the Fourth. So, in other words, I mean, at first he, he said he paid for it by using Craigslist. So he got it from a guy, but in reality he actually stole it. So apparently he thought he didn't steal it. Maybe he just lied to them. Well anyway, he begins to work on an app called Papaya. So that way he'll get to contact his deaf girlfriend, Amaya. Uh, the app suddenly listens to the user's voice, and all the words are posted on the screen. But... Amaya is very upset that the app only makes it convenient for her to understand. But not for him to understand, which I call that fucking bullshit! Because, you know, deaf people can actually try to type up all those words to understand. But I know she's doing our sign languages and everything just to figure it out. Well, anyway. But well, Matthias started to get a message from Nora by someone named Erica. He gets a Skype video call from all of his friends. You got Damon, AJ, DJ Lex, and even a couple named Serena and Nari. Apparently he became so frustrated uh, by constantly restarting the computer. It, it keeps uh, freezing or cutting off. <sighs> that sort of thing. I mean, he begins to find out what's included inside the computer. Like, there was actually a folder. And he begins to check to see how many uh, files have been, have been stored in. And it turns out that it had, like, over 900 gigabytes uh, all full. So he begins to separate the photos to see what's inside, and he begins to notice that there's actually tons of video files of, of all these surveillance camera shots, uh, but they just show the victim actually getting killed, like by 
by one of the killers actually throwing some gasoline or something like that. They even hide one of the victims inside that that can. There's even another video where they show um, uh, one guy just setting up a trap by putting a can in there, and then one one girl suddenly ran and, and got caught by by one of those uh, traps. Yeah, that sort of thing. They even had a shot of a baby. They even had a shot of a guy dancing around, a fat guy. Everything. I can't believe I'm actually saying all this stuff, but it's in the movie. If you don't believe me, then watch it for yourself. Uh, anyway, we begin to learn that the characters like Serena and Nori, they, they just revealed that they just got engaged. Apparently they're just, they're lesbians. But Serena wishes that she told her mom sooner because her mom actually is in a coma due to brain cancer. So she's on life support for now. But meanwhile, Mateus actually discovers that the girl Erica is actually Nora. So basically, Nora is just typing up everything from the Facebook uh, Messenger. And apparently he's typing everything up to see what's going on. And, and Mateus is doing exactly what he was trying to find out, what those messages are coming from. And next thing you know, um, there were um, more messages to come in. And, and then there's other softwares and other stuff that's included on that file that he separated from. And then there's a file called The River. Yeah, it's a software where you suddenly uh, you go inside, you see like somewhat of a like a uh, sort of like an old computer game in that sort of way, but it's just done where it just shows like the tunnel and the the boat that you're riding on. That's what it is, and then you suddenly see a pop-up message where they tell you to type up something, you know, sort of secretly, where they tell you what you have. The Nora character is just typing up about what he wants. I mean, he wants his computer back. And he also, yeah, he threatens uh, Mateus. But he also wants uh, his account. He actually has a Bitcoin account that Mateus suddenly found out. And apparently he transferred to another account to see if this will happen. Next thing you know... Nora suddenly has followers joining him by the name of Sharon. And there's like several others that, that goes in and, and they're going around harming all the fr all of his friends by Skype. So apparently you're seeing like a lot of uh, Skype footages of, of all the victims getting attacked. And apparently that's where we get to see the the character of Sharon, which looks like a, a Grim Reaper. Yeah, he's wearing a hoodie and not revealing himself, but apparently you see all these annoying uh, Mako Brocking uh, that's <laughs> suddenly affecting the computer, shutting it down a bit and starts to you know, crash the, the computer and just starts to restart over again and everything. We finally reveal who the, the killer is, which is Sharon, the followers, who actually took out Amaya's roommate named Kelly, who just got through the house, and she just made a call just after she started bringing up all the mail, and she was actually ordering something, you know, just for takeout or something, until the killer suddenly appears and, and caught her. Knocked her unconscious and pushed her all the way straight uh, to the door, to the next room. I think it was the kitchen. So, that's when we finally reveal them and, and starts to talk in a deeper voice. Before he suddenly takes off his hoodie and we begin to see who he is. And trying to tell him and threatening uh, Mateus by going back to the river and try to get the account. If he had the money, 
and I want the computer back. Well, apparently he's trying to find a way. He was also lying to them, to his, especially to his friends, that um, that this is part of a game. Because they were also playing the Cards Against Humanity. What is up with this Cards Against Humanity uh, trend here? Well, it's it's a stupid game. Um. Anyway, they're playing that game. Um, they're contacting. They're just doing whatever they can. So they're trying to make it up, pretending that this is this is not real, but eventually it is real. So apparently they found out that the girl Erica Dunn was actually missing. With Sharon just hacking her account, saying all this stuff on Facebook Messenger. And, you know, this is really funny, because the Facebook Messenger suddenly types up all the words in capitals, but it's but the bubbles are in black, but suddenly it disappears, it deletes everything, which that makes me wonder, how do they do that? I mean, how do they delete it, uh, their message through a Facebook uh, Messenger? I couldn't even delete a message on there, on my Facebook account, using Facebook Messenger. You know, in case if I make a mistake. I couldn't even do any editing either. God, it, I swear to God, these followers must have been so fucking smart. Anyway. As it just goes on, um... Sharon suddenly complies. Mateus transfers all the accounts, again, to Sharon's accounts. Um... So all the hackers suddenly join in. They decided to, you know, play a game on all of Matea's friends. So they're starting to go after them. So they brought in all of their followers to, to start hacking them. Started, uh, started uh, taking their videos and start uh, looping them. Like, like for example, they took AJ's uh, YouTube channel. They play one of his videos because he's a conspiracy theorist. Great, that's what we need these days. He's, he starts looping all these videos, showing all the clips, and he started to take them out, captured all from his cell phone that went directly to the laptop that Mateus has. That's recorded straight from the, the webcam. <laughs> oh god, this is getting so complicated. Yeah, he just loops it, puts all these... Um, video clips and starts uh, recording them by actually calling 911 onto the phone and then the cops suddenly arrives at AJ's uh, apartment how on earth did they arrive so quickly is beyond me it's just fucking <laughs> continuity errors right there where the cops suddenly appeared through the stairs you know he thought the cops actually came from the door but it actually came from the stairs, so they must have came from the window. I don't know how did they do that, but I guess they took some time. They shot him. They completely shot him, right in front of everybody. And then, the other Sharons started to go after the girl. Which is, um, Nari. The Sharon tortures her by figuring out, what should I do? Should I kill, um... Your mom, or shall I kill your friend that's at the subway train station? Because Mateus is trying to go after um, Amaya because Amaya is in the subway train station. Yeah, it actually broke out for a while, but she, she's over there at Western Avenue. Because Mateus is going to go after to see if she's alright. So he's starting to go chase after her by going on his bike but anyway yes their followers actually uh, hacked into the EMS uh, shut off the uh, the life support and it causes the machine to go flatlined so now she's gone and then uh, one of the killers and I think that's part of the, the group started to uh, push her out of the train just as the train starts to come by. And of course she's gonna get killed, so 
It's also starting to happen to all the friends to Mateus. You know, all leads to what happens at the end where Mateus, well, already on the streets and you know, trying to go after um, Amaya so that way you know, she doesn't get killed, but apparently she does. And then he gets killed too. That's pretty much it. Then, then we begin to reveal who all the Sharons are by actually revealing their face on screen. We also begin to see Erica Dunn just got out of the um, out of the closet because also the killer just actually took um, one of his friends and actually hanged them up onto the <laughs> onto the closet. So yes, we saw Erica Dunn at the end. Um, she had a big gaunt. She took it off, and there's like a big giant hole on it with blood on her forehead. They're part of the circle. The circle, yes. Just like that awful film last year with uh, Emma Watson and Tom Hanks. Where you actually have the circle, which is a cult, to to join in. Where they, they team up to actually go after everyone. So they go around hacking their accounts and do a lot of crazy things on the internet. So this is the dark web right here. So it proves that the internet is is a scary place. This movie should fucking go to hell and stay there. Can't believe this movie got made, green lighted, and I had to spend 92 minutes of my fucking life that I'll never get back. This isn't a movie at all. This is just a public service announcement to tell people not to steal other people's laptops or be aware of internet users out there that the internet is a scary place no matter what you do or how you try they're gonna start hacking into your account and do something completely stupid and this is exactly what you're gonna go for I'm sorry I'm going over the top here with this review but that's exactly how I felt when I watched a very bad movie you get really frustrated, angry, totally furious that it just never ends. But I guess life's too short these days. There were so many stupid fucking scenes in this movie that I just never forget. Like for example, there's even a scene where they show a YouTube video of one of the Sharons actually pushing off a girl named Lex on top of the building. She fell off, she landed on the ground, lots of blood starts to spread, of course. There's a lot of torture videos I've seen that's all from the files that that this guy has. Must have got tons of shit that he had to put up on on that laptop. Uh, Mateus tried to delete all that stuff, but it's not helping much. Uh, out of all the characters I could think of, I feel sorry for the deaf girl Amaya. And maybe I do feel sorry for the couple right there, but the yeah, Serena and Nori. They didn't deserve that. I mean, they're, I know they were, they were um, lesbians.
and all this other crap that's going on. I don't know. Mateus is a bit of a dick. I'm sorry to say this, but he's a fucking idiot. He looks almost like... The, the actor who played him looks almost like a poor man's uh, Killian Murphy. You know who Killian Murphy is? Yeah, the actor from 28 Days Later, Batman Begins, and Red Eye. Yeah, that's the actor. Yeah, because he has that blue eyes and and black hair and his facial expressions he makes. Yeah. I was thinking to myself, is that Killian Murphy? <laughs> He's not that young, though. I mean, he, he's already in his 40s. <sighs> oh, boy. But, of course, I already know who Betty Gabriel is with Get Out and an Upgrade. So I'm familiar with that. And I think Erica Dunn was the... I think that might be the same actress who was in the first movie. Unfriended. Uh, there's also an alternative ending. I'm surprised they even have an alternative ending. Where I begin to find out that Mateus, as he texts uh, Amaya, that he was actually in the spot where they shared a kiss. But they once up arriving at the side and they actually found a hole on the ground with an open casket. You know, just before Sharon came around and knocks him out and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, I, I, it sounds pretty stupid too, because of course even Mateus dies anyway. <laughs> See, this movie's so bad, they can't even figure out a better ending for this movie. <laughs> and that's why. <sighs> they were going to get um, the original writer, Nelson Greaves, to, to join in. Since I think he wrote the first movie. Yeah, Jason Blum and Timber Bigmanvitev uh, producing. They should be ashamed of themselves. And Steven Succo uh, wrote uh, The Grudge and Texas Chainsaw 3D. Yes, that's the same writer, right? Now I know why Texas Chainsaw 3D was a piece of shit. And it shows how much of a shitty writer he is. And the original title was going to be called unfriended game nights, but they eventually went to dark web. Because apparently this is supposed to be a game night. So that's why they're playing Cards Against Humanity. You know, you see Mateus and his friends on Skype just <laughs> just playing a game. You see AJ, you know, being a conspiracy theorist, just poking fun with the rest of the guys and gals joining in. You also got Kelly and all the rest too. You got a lot of people. I'm just amazed why this movie got made. I know there's a movie called Searching that eventually took the same concept of shooting a movie on a computer screen. Yeah, I've yet to check that movie out because that's the movie that stars John Cho. And I guarantee you that film is way better than this. Even though I'm not a big fan of this concept of shooting the entire film on a computer screen. Yeah. And I think the film flopped at the box office, so it disappeared. So I had a chance to watch it online. I'm not going to waste my money on this. So. <sighs> Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. Fuck Unfriended. Fuck the sequel. Fuck the filmmakers who came up with this idea. Fuck Blumhouse for coming up with their better excuse to greenlight it, along with Universal. I already saw a lot of bad films already this year, as opposed to good movies. It's definitely going to join in with the likes of The Predator, that other dumb horror film from Blumhouse called Truth or Dare. It will definitely join in with those Fifty Shades of Shit movies that we got with the last sequel. Everything. 
That's all I'm going to say. This movie can kiss my ass. So that's Unfriended, Dark Web, and I give it, as usual, zero fucking stars. Amazing why people had to waste their time with it. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later. Much later. Bye!